Hey, what's up everyone? James here, and today we are going to talk about what happened to Joe Flacco and how he went from a Super Bowl champion MVP to a backup. Guys, make sure to like the video, comment down below, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It helps out the channel a lot. Joe Flacco was born in Audubon, New Jersey, where he had five brothers. Flacco grew up in a very competitive family as he played football, baseball, and basketball for Audubon High School. He was very competitive with his brothers and they all pushed each other to greatness. This led to him striving to work hard and succeed in sports. In high school, Flacco played pretty decently, but he was only rated as a three-star recruit coming out of high school, where he ended up signing with the University of Pittsburgh to play college football. He redshirted his first year, and in 2004, he was a backup, but he only threw four passes. Flacco was not able to break into the starting lineup and beat the current starter, so he actually moved down to the FCS level, the Division II level. The following season, he transferred to the University of Delaware, where in 2006, he threw for 2,783 yards and 18 touchdowns. The following season, he played much better as he had 4,263 yards and 23 touchdowns to just five interceptions. He led his team to the Division II FCS championship game, but ended up losing 49-21 to to Appalachian State. After Flacco was done at the University of Delaware, he ended up with 20 school records during his time. However, Flacco didn't even think he had a shot at the NFL and in fact told his coach and asked them if he could play baseball. However, his coach, and thankfully he said this, told Flacco that he would definitely be drafted and in fact be drafted high. Now this shocked Flacco as again he almost considered switching over to a baseball career. This would end up being a huge moment in his life as in the Senior Bowl, Flacco put up a solid showing again and solidified himself as a top 5 quarterback. Despite playing at a smaller school in the University of Delaware, he had the ideal measurements and a strong arm that many NFL scouts coveted. Flacco even won the competition for the strongest arm as he beat out the other quarterbacks at the Senior Bowl. Many had him pegged as a second round pick, however, in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens ended up moving all over the place in the draft. They moved from the 8th overall pick to the 26th overall pick to finally move back up to take Flacco with the 18th overall pick. Now, many thought that this was actually a reach, an overreach, and was actually kind of ridiculous at the time to think that he could make the jump from Delaware to the NFL and that he was not able to handle it. However, as everyone would quickly find out, he was going to be pushed into the spotlight immediately. The Ravens starting quarterback Kyle Bowler actually suffered a season ending injury before the season which led to Flacco starting the entire season as a rookie where he led his team to an 11-5 record while passing for 2,971 yards, 14 touchdowns to 12 interceptions while completing 60% of his passes. Now these weren't fantastic numbers but the Ravens had an excellent defense which led to their winning record. The Ravens went on to win their playoff game against the Miami Dolphins as Flacco became just the third quarterback in NFL history to win his first postseason start and the first one to do so on the road. He then went on to win the following week in the divisional round against the Tennessee Titans. Again, Flacco didn't have great numbers, in fact the defense definitely carried the team, but he still led his team to the 2009 AFC Championship game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, they ended up losing the game 23-14 as Flacco only had 141 yards passing and threw 3 interceptions, including a pick 6 to Troy Polamalu. Still, Despite the up and down season, he played good overall and was still named the NFL Rookie of the Year. So was this just a lucky year? Was it only due to the defense? How was he going to do in the future? Again, as just a rookie, he took his team to the AFC Championship game and almost took them to the Super Bowl. Well, over the next three seasons, Flacco averaged 3,600 yards and 22 touchdowns as he became a solid starter and led his team to the playoffs in each season. So Flacco turned himself into a great starter and a leader who made the playoffs all of his first four years of his NFL career. 
However, in the 2012 season, Flacco would establish his legacy. This season, Flacco passed for 3,817 yards and 22 touchdowns to 10 interceptions while averaging 60% completion percentage. He again led his team to the playoffs with a 10-6 record. They faced the Indianapolis Colts in the wildcard round where Flacco finished the game with 282 yards and 2 touchdowns. The following week, the Ravens headed into the divisional round against the Denver Broncos, where Flacco had arguably his best game and play of his entire career. Flacco threw for 331 yards and 3 touchdowns. However, entering the fourth quarter, the Ravens were down 35 to 28 with one last chance to tie the game. On third and three, Flacco threw a 70 yard touchdown bomb to Jacoby Jones, sending the game into overtime. He's got great speed, but that's not going to get it done. Flacco stepping up and throwing deep down the far sideline. Caught into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacoby Jones. Does that happen in the Denver secondary? That is stunning. Many have named this the Mile High Miracle and one of the greatest clutch plays in NFL playoff history. The Ravens ended up winning the game 38 to 35 in double overtime after Peyton Manning threw an interception and the Ravens hit a field goal to seal the game. The following week, Flacco went on to face the New England Patriots and Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game. The Ravens went on to beat the Patriots 28-13 as Flacco had 240 yards and 3 touchdown passes. Flacco became just the second quarterback in NFL history to defeat both Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in the same postseason. This led us to Super Bowl 47 where Joe Flacco faced off against the San Francisco 49ers. The Ravens pushed around and dominated the 49ers early in the game to go up 28-6 to start the second half after a kickoff return for a touchdown. However, this is when the infamous power outage Super Bowl happened. The power went out at the Superdome for 34 minutes, which many argued helped calm down the 49ers and ruin all of the Ravens' momentum. When play resumed, the 49ers were much better as they came all the way back to push the game to the absolute limit. Flacco and the Ravens hung on to win 34-31. Flacco ended up finishing the Super Bowl 287 yards passing and 3 touchdowns as Flacco was named the MVP in one of the best runs in NFL playoff history. Flacco threw 0 interceptions during the postseason and when you look at his career it's phenomenal that he had this postseason run and didn't throw a single pick. This would end up being Flacco's best moment of his career and the following season he became the NFL's highest paid quarterback in NFL history with a 6 year $120 million contract. However, Flacco followed his Super Bowl season in the 2013 season as the worst regular season of his entire career as he had 3,900 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, but an insane 22 interceptions as the Ravens went just 8-8. Eight and eight. Following his incredible Super Bowl run and his new contract, many were shocked by how bad he actually played. This leads us into 2014 where he bounced back and passed for 3,986 yards with the most touchdowns of his career at 27 with 12 interceptions. The team went 10-6 as he led them to the divisional round of the playoffs where they actually lost a shootout to the New England Patriots 35-31. This would be the last playoff season as a starter for Flacco. As in the following season in 2015, Flacco only played in 10 games before he tore his ACL and MCL. The following two seasons, Flacco started all 32 games averaging 3,700 yards passing and 19 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. But the team didn't make the playoffs and it looked like Flacco's run as a great starter might have been coming to an end. This leads us into the 2018 season where the Baltimore Ravens with Joe Flacco's contract coming up and expiring drafted star college quarterback Lamar Jackson. Flacco started the season but after 9 games he was injured again and he only led the team to a 4-5 record before getting injured. However, when Lamar Jackson took over, the team went 6-1 and, and sealed Flacco's fate. The Ravens saw what they needed to see in Lamar Jackson and had enough faith in him to let go Joe Flacco. This leads us to the 2019 season where Flacco signed with the Denver Broncos. Yes, the Broncos that he had his epic game against. 
but the Broncos also drafted a quarterback in the second round, Drew Locke. And when asked if he was willing to be a mentor to Locke, Flacco said it wasn't his job and he was focused on winning games as a starting quarterback, not mentoring a rookie. However, as the season played out, he only played in 8 games before suffering a season-ending neck injury and he only led his team to a 2-6 record. This leads us to now, guys. In 2020, Flacco signed with the New York Jets this offseason to be the backup. Many people think he's done, but Flacco still says that he's holding out hope to be a starter again one day. So guys, what do you think will happen to Flacco now? Can he be a starter again? I personally think it's pretty amazing that he wasn't good enough for an FBS Division I college school and went to the University of Delaware all the way to becoming the Super Bowl MVP. He never had fantastic, great stats, and he had many seasons that were pretty mediocre. He also has a lot of critics that say the defense carried him and it's the only reason he made all those playoff runs. But his 2012 Super Bowl season was still very special and solidified his career as a whole. He brought a championship to Baltimore as a starting quarterback and not a lot of quarterbacks can say that. You can't take it away from him. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you think about Flacco's career, your favorite moments, what your predictions are. Guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to keep up with all my videos. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.